All right. Well, hello there. We're going to do some solving absolute value equations. Absolute value showing up with those two bars on both sides of a number or a variable. And in this case, we're just asking for the absolute value of x. And if the absolute value of x is a, then a um, is going to be the positive version or the negative version. Because absolute value is basically looking at distance, distance from 0 or distance from a certain point. So for instance, if the absolute value um, of negative 3 is going to be 3. So that means if A, like for instance, if A we know is 3, then that means X could be 3 or it could be negative 3. Both of those would be true because um, absolute value of 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is is also 3. Again, um, absolute value is just asking distance from 0. How far away is negative 3 from 0? It is 3 away. How far is 3 from 0? It is 3 away. So keep in mind, absolute value is going to always be the positive version of the number we're looking at. It's the, the distance there. So steps for solving absolute value equations, because we're going to see them, and we're going to do some inequalities in a moment. First of all, you need to create two equations. Two equations are going to show up in that. Like what's inside the absolute value bars is equal to the positive and negative of what's not in the absolute value bars. So let's uh, let's just pick an example. Okay. So I can say that um, two x, the absolute value of two x is equal to three. So I have two questions to run myself here, as I need to ask. So let's see, what's inside the absolute value bars is equal to the positive and negative of what's not in it. So the two equations I would be solving here is 2x equals 3, um, or 2x is equal to negative 3. And I would need to solve both of those and see um, what is true. And sometimes both of them are true, and sometimes neither of them are true. Once you've done that, you solve each equation. The x values are the 1 or the other. Okay, you gotta check them both out to see if it's a true statement. Number three, the thing you want to do is you want to look for extraneous solutions, solutions that do not satisfy the equations. You cross them out and they are not included in your final solution. So just because you solve it and get an answer, um, don't just end there. Just see if it is true, if it is a true statement, because some things are not going to work. And then you graph your solution on a number line. So let's go ahead and drive it out. Try it out here. Okay, so we have the absolute value of x is equal to 3. So I'm going to go with x equals 3, and x equals negative 3. Equals negative 3. And I'm a solution for x. So my solutions for the absolute value of x is that negative 3 and 3. And this is how I would graph that situation. Because it could be either one here. And both of them would be true. Here's another example, um, but this one's starting to look more like an equation. When I see this, I want to go ahead and simplify the side first. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and I'm going to get the absolute value of x. I'm going to work through this. This is um, 6. And then I am come back to my other points, and I can see that x is equal to 6, or x is equal to negative 6. And on a number line, it would look like this. I have negative 6. I have 6. It's my solution for x. I would have dots on both, but I do want to see if it's true. So I can come back up to my beginning part here, and I can plug in 6 for x, and I can say, well, is the absolute value of 6 plus 5 equal to 11? Um, and that is a true statement. How about the absolute value of negative 6? plus 5 is equal to 11. Um, absolute value of negative 6 is 6, plus 5 equals 11. Both of those would be true statements. Let's try another example. Okay, in this situation, you do want to continue to solve it like a one-step equation. Um, because 3 is being multiplied and it's not inside the absolute value, I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 3. And what that does is that isolates my absolute value. Um, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and I need to then see if x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. On a graph of x, I have negative 5, and I have 5. I would say that it's here, or it's here. If I want to graph that, um, I want to represent that as a graph. And if I check my answers, 3 times the absolute value of 5 
equals 15, and that is true. 3 times absolute value of negative 5 is 15. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5 times 3 is 15. Both of those are indeed true. The graphs below show two absolute values. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, we have n minus 1 is less than 3. Now, here's a little trick. So this symbol right here is less than. So you're looking at an and. I'm looking for an intersection. And I've heard some kids say this. Some students go less than. And they hear the and. Unlike this one right here, with this one is greater, they hear great or so this one is going to be a union um, a great or and this and is going to be an intersection okay so let's go ahead and solve this one now when i'm looking at this um, inequality right here i can see that it's looking at the absolute value of n minus one so i want to see where um, everything is three away from positive one Okay, three away from positive one. So here's my positive one, and I see that three away will put me at four, and three away from positive one will be negative two. Another way to look at it is just by solving it. That's, that's one way to solve this kind of thing. Another way is to solve it as it's two pieces, as an and. So n minus one is less than three, over n, n minus 1 is greater than negative 3. Now notice what I did is I switched it to the negative and um, I flipped the symbol also to keep up with it. So add 1, add 1, and end up with n is less than 4, which is what we found here. And I add 1 and I add 1, and end up with n is greater than negative 2 which is what I ended up here. So you've got a couple different options here. You can either look at what's going on in the number line, or you can go ahead and solve the equation. Um, the absolute value of negative 1 is less than 3, represents all numbers whose distance from 1, that's where I'm getting that from, notice I'm using the opposite of the symbol I see, whose distance from 1 is less than 3 units away. Okay, now let's look at this other side. This is our or. The absolute value of n minus 1 is great or than 3, so that's going to be a union. And I'm going to solve it the same way. I'm going to look at the negative 1 here, and I'm looking from the starting point of 1, so kind of going to the opposite side, and I'm trying to see what's 3 away. Um, so 1, 2, 3, so my answer is 4. 1, 2, 3, my answer is negative 2. I can also solve this like I did over on the other side. I can look at this as n minus 1 is greater than 3, or n minus 1 is less than negative 3. You can flip the symbol and flip to the other side of the number line. Plus 1, plus 1, end up with n is greater than 4, which is what I got here. Or plus 1, plus 1, end up with n is less than negative 2, which is I, what I get here. And so I got my less than, and I've got my greater than, and this is an or, so I'm looking for the union, and it's representing everything that I see here. So I'm going to try out a couple of these. Why don't you press pause, and you try this one. So press pause, you give it a try, and come on back, and let's see how we did. Pause, press pause. All right, how'd you do? Because I'm ultimately looking to see here um, from my three, I'm trying to see um, what items, what things are four away from three. So I'm going four this way, and I'm going four this way, or I can solve it as an equation. And this is an or because it's great or, um, great or, uh, and here's my graph of it. Let's try another one. All right, the absolute value of w plus two is great or greater than 5. Press pause and you try it. All right, here's my solution to this one. I can see w is greater than 3 or w is less than negative 7. Or I could look at um, negative 2. Uh, I see the 2 in my absolute value, so I go to negative 2, and I can see what is 5 away from it. What's 5 away from it is 3 and negative 7. Um, both are good, useful methods. Look at this, guys. Um, the absolute value of c plus 7 um, is less than, that's less than, than, 
Nine. Press pause, you try it. All right, this is what I got. That's going to be a negative 16 and 2 are my two marks. So I'm going to look at negative 7, and I'm going to go 9 steps both way. And I see that I end up at negative 16 and 2. It is this intersection right here. That is my solution. Um, here's our last one. Why don't you press pause and try this one out. Keep an eye on the symbol. Okay, this one was kind of a tricky one, because you can see here as we're graphing this out, we're looking for an and. Okay, so we're, we're kind of keeping our eyes out for an and, which means an intersection. So I'm looking for the intersection of these two things, and I'm not seeing an intersection. I've got from negative 6 going less, and i got negative 2 going more, and it's because of this particular thing right here. Um, C plus 4, the absolute value of that is always going to be positive. So if this side is always going to be positive, there's no way it's going to be less than this negative number. Um, so that's something we could catch a little early, and I want you to get in the habit of seeing that early. But here's my proof for it, the rest of this. All right, that's it. I am going to go and try to find a panda to ride around the park in my pajamas, because why wouldn't I do that?